I really love being at home after a long week of work. And having cats and plants in my home makes me super happy. They are like my favorite things that bring me a lot of joy. Cats are playful and make my home lively but calm at the same time. Plants add a natural ambiance to my space from the greenery to the textures. Everything comes together to make a cozy home. But I found out a lot of my existing houseplants can be toxic for pets. Luckily, my cats have stopped bothering my plants after a bit of training a long time ago. Still, I did some research and started gathering plants that are safe for them. That's why I'm excited to share with all you pet and plant lovers my collection of pet safe plants. Let's start with the most recent transformation of this home. I call this cat jungle corner a true feline jungle. This space was designed for my cats and my plants to coexist, so it was very important for the plants to be considered pet safe. This area is also very sunny, and there are a lot of plants that like this kind of a condition, but not a lot of them are considered pet safe. So these ones that I have here are the ones that I curated that love this kind of bright condition and are also considered pet safe according to research done by the ASPCA. Or you can subscribe to my newsletter at felinejungle.com slash subscribe and I'll send you a handy guide on cat safe plants for beginners. All right, let's start with this pet safe plant tour. Right next to me, I have the most common and cheapest orchid that you will find. This is the moth orchid and I have it growing in just water. When I first got it, I had rotting roots. So I cut all of them and I saw a tip that said just grow in water and I tried it and it's doing really great. I also have um, several moth orchids here. This one is a tinier one that I have growing in just orchid bark. This one I bought growing in moss and I just kept it there because it was flowering before so I didn't want to disturb it. And it seems to be doing just fine. So as you can see, moth orchids are very easy to grow and you can basically grow it in any medium and it'll do fine. Did you know that this is also an orchid? This is the vanilla orchid where you get all the vanilla flavoring from. This is the climbing vining type. So you can see that it likes to trail. I have it growing in just regular soil. I water it once a week. This one likes bright indirect light, which is why I have it hanging here. Here I have another type of orchid. This is the Catalea. This one has a different structure. It has a big bulb on the bottom and then it has these very thick leaves. It's growing a little baby shoot over here. So that's very exciting. This is another type of Catalea. I forget the name, but you can tell because of that thick bulb on the bottom and the little offshoots that come from it. I have it growing in a little bubble tea container. It's very important to see the roots because when you have good roots, then you have good orchids. This is the other orchid I have. It's called the Oncidium. It also has a very thick bulb and the leaves are more grassier and floppier, I would say, than the Catalea. I would say this is the easiest orchid to take care of because you don't really have to wor worry about watering. You can just dunk it in the water and it actually likes that extra moisture. This makes sure it has good air circulation and a lot of bright light. This specific species I have here is called the Oncidium Baby Raspberry Chocolate. So I actually saw this variety um, in Hong Kong when I visited the flower market and I was obsessed with this plant. So I was very happy to see it here in New York. This is my growing collection of orchids. I am not an expert by any means. There's still a lot that I need to learn. I bought them all with flowers, but now that they all dropped, I really don't know how to make them flower again. So if you have any tips, please let me know. Oh, and there's an upcoming orchid show at the New York Botanical Garden. This year it's all about fashion and orchids. So I think it's going to be very colorful, very bright, very fun. If you guys are interested in seeing a tour of that, let me know by liking this video and maybe I'll make my way up there. 
Behind me is this very big money tree. It's a showstopper and my number one recommendation if you want a large pet safe plant. These are very easy to take care of. They love the bright and direct sunlight. They also thrive in low light conditions too if you have that. They are just really adaptive, I would say. They're sold in two different styles. The most common one that you'll find in the US is the one with the braided trunk, the one that I have over here. It's actually composed of five money trees braided into one. <laughs> This braided style is very common. The lesser known style is just the single trunk one. Just having one money tree. This one I had to find in a local plant shop and usually they're sold in like a tiny size. I wanted like a big one trunk money tree but they're really hard to find here in the US. I saw them everywhere in Hong Kong. You probably seen it in my Hong Kong flower market planter video. You probably heard me talking about orchids and money tree a lot, especially if you follow me for a long time. So I definitely want to show you some new plants that I got from a local plant shop called Plant Corner NYC. But before I get into those plants, I also got a surprise gift box from the same shop and it's the perfect gift box to show in this video. My friend Jira from Plant Corner has supported my feeling jungle journey from the very beginning and she surprised me with a shipment of pet safe plants and also a gift to enhance my cat jungle. I know that she has a variety of gift box available at her website. There's one for like plant beginners, I think there's one for like self-care and even one for like getting well soon for your friend. I'm assuming this one is for cat and plant lovers. Let's find out together. <laughs> Ooh, there's a few things in here. It comes with a little message. It says, Viona, we think this gift box is so per perfect for you. We hope you enjoy it. Sincerely, Jira. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. There is a few gifts in here. Start with this one. It looks like a terracotta pot. It's a catnip seed sprouting kit. Oh my God, this is so perfect. I know that thing's gonna love it already. One time my friend Phoebe gave me some of her fresh catnip and he went crazy. So I'm very excited for this. We also have a little, I think it's cat toy. It's a cactus. Oh my God, you get it, cactus. So cute. I already know that thing is gonna be obsessed with this. I think he's sleeping right now, but I know he's gonna play with it once he gets up. Let's just put it right here. So he's like cuddling it while he goes to sleep. So cute. All right, what else we have here? We have a box. Oh, this one's a ceramic mug. Oh my God, it's a cat mug. This is so perfect. Oh my God, look at all the little colorful cats. This is perfect because I love to drink tea in the morning and this is going to make me so happy while I make my tea. And what else we got here? And lastly, we have something from Joyful Dirt. Oh, this is plant food. This, I've never heard of this brand before, but this is gonna be really nice to try on my new plants that I also got from Plant Corner. I got these lipstick plants from Jira. They're related to Hoyas. They grow in a very similar way and they're all considered wax plants. And I can tell why, because of the texture of the leaves. So if you watched my plantar video, you know that I didn't do really well with Hoyas last year. A lot of them died off. So I'm starting the new year with their cousins, the lipstick plants. And the reason why these plants got the name is because of the flowers. The flowers are really bright red and they kind of remind people of like lipstick colors. It has like a bell shape, it's really cool. I'll show you in a picture. This one is called the Lipstick Mona Lisa. And I think this one has like purplish red flowers. I also got two other types of lipstick plant from there. This is just a regular lipstick plant. And this one has the red flowers. 
It has very similar leaves to the Hoya Nakonosa, I believe. It's more almond shaped compared to the Mona Lisa. And the third type I have is the most different one, I would say. This is the lipstick bicolor. So the leaves are much smaller. It's fuzzy and it has a two tone. So it has this light green color and this more yellowish cream color mixed into it. This one's really cool. It's, I like that it's more different and it's very fun to touch. These are the brand new lipstick plants that I just got. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them yet, but I feel like this corner needs some more plants, especially on the top. So I might have them trailing down. I feel like these would make really good trailing plants when they grow out of the pot. So let's go on and talk about more plants in this corner. You've probably been staring at this plant this whole entire video. This is also a new plant that I got. It's the Boston Fern. I'm just putting it on the shelf temporarily because I love the look of it. Um, but this plant is very common and cheap. I got this one at Whole Foods for $10, which is absolute steal for how big it is. But I haven't figured out how to make it happy yet. I realized that it loves high humidity, which is very hard for me to provide right now in this cold, wintry New York City weather. I had it in a very drafty area and it went into shock and started dropping all its leaves. Um, right now if I shake it, it'll probably drop some leaves off as well, as you can see here. So it gets really messy, which I am not too happy about. I just have to like figure out how to make it happy so it doesn't make this crispy leaf sound. With that being said, it doesn't look too happy, but it's also growing. So. If you have the Boston fern, please let me know if you have any tips. I would definitely need some for this new plant that I got. What I have here is the variegated string of hearts. This plant has been in the same corner for a long time, even when I had the old shelf here. It's very easy to take care of. It loves the bright sunlight. And when it gets too long, all I have to do is trim it back and propagate it. Right now, it doesn't look as happy because there hasn't been a lot of sun. Today is actually like one of the first weekends where we have like two consecutive days of sun. So hopefully I'll bounce back when spring comes around. This is the regular string of heart that I have and I just have it hanging here because I don't know where to put it. And also Ding likes to walk on this handrail a lot. So I figured I'll put a pet safe plant in case he gets into it. What I just show you are all the pet safe plants that like bright light conditions, but there are actually a lot of pet safe plants that like more shadier, low light conditions, like the Calithea and Peperomias. I personally only have one Calithea, and it is this one right here. Calitheas are generally more harder to take care of, especially if you have like a drier climate. So I don't recommend them for beginners. But I find that this Calithea Makoyana is like the easiest Calithea that you can take care of. It's actually also called the peacock plant because it reminds people of the peacock's tail. So you can see why it got that name. It doesn't need filtered water or like osmosis water. I just use tap water and I water it once a week and it's thriving in this spot next to my desk. It has some light coming from the skylight, but other than that, it gets like some dapple light from the window that I was just sitting at and it does absolutely amazing. Like I barely have to take care of it. But is it okay to have toxic plants? I personally have a lot of toxic plants that I've collected over the years and I would say it's completely fine as long as your cats don't ingest any of these plants. It's definitely a case by case basis. Like for example, me, she is not interested in my plants at all. Whereas when Thing was a little kitten, like only a few months old, he used to get into the plants. But understanding why he did it and finding a way to stop him was 100% possible. One way to go about getting thing out of the plants is to put all my toxic plants on a high shelf like this one and making it really hard for him to access it. This way he loses all motivation to get into them. I'll probably make a video about this in the future because it seems like a very common problem with a lot of cat and plant lovers. 
But anyways, I have a lot of Monsteras and Philodendrons on this shelf, but I do have a few pet safe plants too. Behind me, I have a few staghorn ferns, but the one in my hand is my favorite one. It has these really cool fuzzy leaves and also grows a frond that grows like a, like a shield basically. And originally I wanted to grow this plant outside in the cat jungle that we were just at, but I find that this plant loves it here. So I might just keep it here. I'm not sure yet. So this is how you can tell that it's a dehydrated staghorn fern. It's a little bit floppy. So it's time to water it. After some training, Thing doesn't really get into my plants anymore, except for two that he is still obsessed about. One is the cat grass, which we grow for him. And he eats it like salad. He just loves like eating it. Something's in the plant. But another one is the spider plant. And I have one behind me. This is the plant that Thing is obsessed with, which is why we keep it up on the high shelf. I don't want him chewing it up like the cat grass. It's a really pretty plant. It's really grassy, loves low light conditions. Really cool fact that I found out recently is that these plants are hallucinogenic for cats. So what does that mean? It basically acts like catnip. It gets them really high, which is also why Thing cannot get his paws off of this plant. Good thing these plants are all considered pet safe according to the ASPCA. I'm aware that there's a lot more pet safe plants out there. And for 2024, I wanna add a lot of these into my current collection. I can't wait to give an update video by the end of the year. If you find any of the things I said today useful and you wanna learn more about it, then you can subscribe to me at feelingjungle.com slash subscribe and I'll send you a free guide on cat safe plants for beginners. Thank you so much for watching and let's chat in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.